To nationwide on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. I'm Ayo DG Makindi. Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibajo presided over the Federal Executive Council meeting, which held virtually at the presidential villa this Wednesday. The meeting, which ended moments ago, had in attendance the Chief of Staff to the President, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, National Security Advisor Babagana Mungunu, and other key officials who also deliberated on issues of utmost national importance. Details of the meeting will come in a subsequent bulletins. The National Assembly is committed to ensuring that Nigerians are not shortchanged by contractors handling road maintenance projects across the country. The committee gave this assurance after inspecting some roads in Ogun and Lagos states executed at more than 200 million naira under the COVID-19 Special Intervention Disbursement, National Assembly Correspondent Vivian Idepefo reports. The inspection tour took the Senate Committee on FEMA to some road maintenance projects being undertaken by the Federal Roads Maintenance Agency under the COVID-19 Special Intervention Funds Disbursement and direct labor in Lagos and Ogun states. These include one kilometer stretch on Bank Anthony Road, three kilometers of Jibowu Ikorodu Road, and one kilometer stretch of Old Abekuta Road, Agege, through the Penn Cinema. 1.5 kilometer stretch of the Kostain Orile Igomu Road through Eric Moore caught the attention of lawmakers as it served as the alternative route during the closure of the third mainland bridge for repairs. This road, the senators learned, has not any form of service in the last 30 years. We are doing it because of the livelihood of our people. Exactly, sir. Has it succeeded in bringing Inosuko? to pedestrians and motorists. The lawmakers focused attention on the quality of work done and insisted on provision of drainage system to guarantee the durability of the roads. The impact on the society looks good. And uh, of course, the, uh, the, the, the quality of work also looks good. Most of these roads are bad. And with the intervention of FEMA, we'll be able to make them good. The Senate committee also noted some of the challenges of FEMA, which include paucity of funds and expressed commitment for an effective oversight of the agency. From Lagos, Vivian Idekwefo, NTA News. To ensure food security in Nigeria, effective provision for mechanized farming should be put in place, especially as the Ministry of Agriculture grows its green imperative program. This was the position of the Minister of Agriculture when he appeared before the Senate Committee on Local and Foreign Debts to give details on its proposed loan. Mubolaji Moribiri has the report. Senate Committee on Local and Foreign Debts seeks clarification from ministries and departments on how such loans will benefit Nigerians when approved. This issue of mechanization has a lot of dimensions, but the, the central part of it is it improves general productivity in the country. The main implementation of the facility will be in 36 states of the Federation, including the Federal Capital Territory. The duration is only for two years, and the project development objective is to prevent, detect, and respond to the threat posed by COVID-19. The committee urged the ministries to post necessary structures and capacity building to avoid future hiccups in programs implementation.
Nothing especially wrong with borrowing. If that money borrowed is used for activities that will engender development and remove our young ones from the, from the streets. With the necessary details provided by the ministries, it is expected that the committee will look into the matter for further legislative action. From the National Assembly, Mobolaji, Moribiri, NTA News. Tourism and hospitality industry is perfecting strategies to enlighten stakeholders on how best to generate revenue from the sector to improve the nation's economy. Abdul Malik Hassan reports. Tourism, a multi billion dollar industry, is globally noted to be one sector that has generated wealth and created employment to many. Despite the diversification policy, Nigerian tourism industry is said not to be doing much, and this is why this seminar is holding to profile solutions on how best to utilize the industry. The creation of one stop center for all tourism registration, licensing, and permitting requirements. This will in turn encourage investment, both foreign and local, within the industry. Peter, I'd like to share some information about China's deep tourism development and its related legislation covering the tourist facility, such as the tourist service center, high standard tourist hotels, etc. China clearly knows that all those are very necessary for the development of tourism. Experts believe that Nigeria needs to revive the tourism industry and harness its full potentials to improve the country's gross domestic products. So you have to generate revenue in order to stand the test of time. And that is why scholars have argued that tourism will soon do better than oil. The oil you have, tourism will be more significant than the oil you have. The efforts at addressing insecurity will improve in bond of tourism. In Abuja, Abdul Malik Hassan, NTA News. Raising the economic status and social well-being of Nigerians through various programs for poverty alleviation by the present administration is adjudged as one of the major single strive that is gradually transforming Nigeria from being a consumer society to a productive nation. This experts asserted on NTA's current affairs program Tuesday Live and emphasized as a sure way of uplifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in the next 10 years, Abu Bakar Usman Akwanga reports. With a population of more than 200 million people, Nigeria, like other developing countries, is said to be grappling with poverty and other social problems. To address the issues, the federal government in 2016 launched the largest social investment structures in Nigeria's history. You can enter what they call the direct credit facility. You can enter to call Agris, it's for agri business and other related SME uh, loans. We have also Ancoboras. And recently, too, uh, we are doing investment in youth. We have what we call youth investment scheme. It's actually targeted at you so that youth can be employed. To a large extent, I, I want to believe that uh, the, the bokeh of programs, you know, uh, they properly impacted the economy, uh, properly impacted the targeted uh, the targeted community, and we can compare this to what we used to have, you know, before 2015, 2016, when this bouquet of uh, programs, you know, were rolled out. The impact of these programs are documented to have spread across the country in education, skills acquisition, microfinance lending, school feeding and nutrition, as well as agriculture. Look at also indigenous solutions to this. How did China lift 700 million people out of poverty within a short period of time, even to the admiration of their detractors? This is by far the most ambitious investment of any government in our country targeting poverty and poverty alleviation. The discussants say federal government has kept faith in the execution of social investment programs, empowering more Nigerians, continuing restiveness and rejuvenating economic activities. In Abuja, Abubakar Usman Akwanga, NTA News.
ECOWAS Vision 2050 is to create a borderless, peaceful, prosperous and cohesive region built on good governance where people have the capacity to access and harness the enormous resources. This is a shared responsibility that the regional parliament is willing to pursue through its strategic plan. Onengie Fineface reports that this plan has been adopted at the ongoing first extraordinary session of the parliament in Freetown, Sierra Leone. ECOWAS Parliament strategic plan is designed to provide direction in decision making and allocation of resources to enable Parliament attain its goals. It provides guidance on the efficient and effective utilization of scarce resources and serves as the basis for monitoring and evaluation of the performance of Parliament. We remain committed to the call for direct election of members of the ECOWAS Parliament. As one of the highlights of the strategic study, study plan, I want to reiterate that call. A direct election by the people will serve creates a sense of responsibility in the leaders and makes them realize that they have been chosen by the people to perform in a patriotic and dedicated role. President of Sierra Leone, Julius Madabiu, and President of the ECOWAS Commission, John claude Kassibru, wants this plan to promote ECOWAS Vision 2050 by addressing critical concerns like ECOWAS single currency, trade liberalization scheme, common external tariff, among other issues. Specifically, the democracy, peace, and security to be a peaceful and stable region. Trade integration through consolidation of the free movement of persons and goods. Human capital development through capacity building of the health system, education, social development, promotion of youth, gender, and employment. The ECOWAS Parliament Strategic Plan 2020 to 2024 also identifies programs with themes and priority areas that would assist the Parliament in executing its mandate as defined by the Supplementary Act. Onengye Fine Face, NT News. The judiciary, as the third arm of government, has taken up the onerous task of dispensing justice with vigor. Although the reasons behind some judgments are sometimes questionable, a round table organized by the Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption, PACAC, is looking at ways and means of improving the reliability of judicial pronouncements. Olabodi Arewa reports. Since independence, courts have played strong roles in shaping the direction of the society through legal pronouncements. Litigants and members of the public sometimes do not understand why the courts take such decisions, leading to mistrust. This virtual meeting of like minds in the judicial sector seeks to formulate a proper philosophy that would guide jurisprudence in the law courts. The burden is on us to raise the standard uh, uh, for society and to make sure that society comes up to that standard. It cannot be gainsaid. That the moral and intellectual quality of the individuals who occupy judicial office is central to the quality of justice which any system will deliver. It is critical that only the most excellent and incorruptible minds are appointed to the bench. Therefore, much as we are complaining about judges that are bad, we should be able to commend judges that are very good. The alleged compromise notice in the judicial sector was laid at the feet of legal practitioners. The forum illustrated the need for a truly independent, impartial, and just judiciary. The only thing you can leave behind is your name, your integrity, your fame for what you have done. The Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption is spearheading the President's reform agenda in anti corruption, working towards changes in the justice system. This is the first edition of the program. Olabo Darewa, NT News. And now it's time to cross over to our Lagos Network Center, where Awal is standing by with the next set of reports on Nationwide. Good evening, Awal. Good evening, Ayo. Good to see you. The decision of the federal government to commit the sum of 765 billion naira to social investment program in year 2021 stems from the positive impact of its various intervention schemes in the past and the desire to grow the number of beneficiaries to 100 million Nigerians. 
Adeni Taiwo got up close and personal with some beneficiaries of the empowerment interventions and filed in this report. Poverty and high rates of unemployment are two socioeconomic realities that can create a lot of imbalance in any society. The federal government was obviously mindful of these truths when in 2016 it launched various schemes targeted at promoting self-reliance and providing safety nets for the vulnerables in the society. In the last five years, special intervention component of the National Social Investment Program, such as homeschool feeding for pupils in public schools, conditional cash transfer to the poorest of the poor, trader money and empire have addressed specific mandates with positive results. The total of nine multiplied by... Apart from being a couple, Matthew and Mary have few other things in common. They both teach at a family-owned private school, leveraging teaching and management skills they acquired during their four years stint as beneficiaries of the federal government youth empowerment program and power those knowledge acquired during that time i'm able to transfer them into what i'm doing presently and it has really helped in uh, improving the business i'm having currently I taught a lot of things about the school records how to handle them although they are no longer on the payroll of the federal government matthew and mary want the federal government to not only sustain the intervention, but also fine-tune it. They promise us that we'll never go back to the streets. We are still holding firmly to that. Even as government works to expand the program with the induction of additional 500,000 beneficiaries into batch C of the scheme, federal government agencies are giving more meaning to the investment with technical support. We even have what you call the cl uh, cluster resettlement, where you put them together get a place for them and they start their businesses. They are acquiring a technology, they are giving a startup sum of money. A minimum of 200,000, I mean 100,000 for each participant. Apart from Empire, which the likes of Matthew and Mary described as a necessary stopgap, other packages such as Government Enterprise and Empowerment Program and 75 billion Naira Youth Investment Fund are also touching lives. In Lagos, Adeni Taiwo, NTN News. Nigeria Customs Strike Force Team Zone A in Lagos State is combing every nook and cranny within its jurisdiction in desperate search of smugglers and their product to make the trade less lucrative. The latest is a seizure of vehicles loaded with rice in areas least expected. Michael Olale reports. From this perspective, one can easily conclude that these vehicles have no sign of contravening any rules or regulations. But beyond the exterior are bags of rice loaded into various compartments. Even the tires are not spared. Two or more bags must have been emptied to, into this tank. Little wonder, the customs described them as wonder vehicles simply because more than 20 bags are usually squeezed into each. It's not only showing desperation of uh, rice smugglers. It is, to me, a demonstration of moral depravity, where human beings do not care about the lives of others. These represent just a few of the 823 bags of foreign rice smuggled into the country, aside for 180 cartons of basmatic rice and other items in this container recovered from a warehouse. Of special reference is this container loaded with 280 bills of second-hand clothing which the Custom Strike Force team described as being stolen simply because the goose evaded necessary customs levies and was abandoned by the truck driver at my two after an intensive chase. Worried by how the container exited the port without clearance is guiding the customs to take a position on badge operations. Use of badges should be discouraged because there's no control. But, you know, somebody who wants your thing is more intelligent than you. But we have to redouble effort to get this thing. If not so, only God knows how many of such things have gone. But for this, it's enough financial loss to them. Also intercepted are 45 pallets of printed label materials, firstly declared to escape payments of 20% duty, while 1,620 pieces of used tires formed part of the seizure, which the custom said has generated 1 billion naira from demand notice in the fourth quarter of the year. In Lagos, 
Michael Olale, NT News. You're watching NT Nationwide. The news will continue shortly from our Midugri Network Center with Mohammed Ibrahim after this commercial break. To stay with us. My name is Dr. Faisal Shuaib. I am the Executive Director and Chief Executive Officer of the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency. Earlier today, I took my first shot of the AstraZeneca vaccine. Despite all of the delays, all of the doubt, here we are, Nigerians can finally access the vaccines. I hope that Nigerians will come out and get this vaccine because these vaccines are safe, they're effective, and they truly work. Over the course of the next few weeks, uh, we have to continue wearing face masks, we have to do social distancing, but I know eventually once we're able to uh, get herd immunity, then we'll be able to stop all of these non-pharmaceutical interventions. To get the vaccination, you should go to the MPHCDA website, there's a link on there that you click and you can register and schedule exactly where you want to get your vaccine. You are getting a lot of orders. Hey, we are trying to shower. Sweep her leg out. She was standing there. Sweep it. I love you so much. And how did I give you the impression that I was interested in that position? 50 year anniversary. You mean anniversary? I mean, it's not if I talk with that now. Oh, you not not for me. Oh. You want to die, me? Yeah. Not for me because of for me. Oh. Oh, money, rest, esteemed viewers to Nationwide from Medugri Network Center. The resurgence of total blackout being experienced in Medugri Liberno State Capital has been described as worrisome by residents having enjoyed restoration of electricity for only three days after two availability of power in Medugri and its environs. Yagum Subukar reports. 
Friday, 24th March 2021, will remain indelible on minds of Medjugorje residents having experienced power outage for two months, but with concerted efforts of Transmission Company of Nigeria. In collaboration with Borno State Government, electricity supply was restored, a situation that turned around the sufferings into jubilation, barely three days of reconnection. Two other towers along Jakana and Benishik axis were brought down by explosives, thereby reversing the total blackout, subjecting people to untold hardship. We are really suffering in Medjugorje. I don't think we have any hope on electricity. Fasting is about to begin, I think, in two weeks' time. And without electricity, I don't think things are going to be easy. This power outage is affecting our life seriously. There are a lot of uh, now. You see, we are always in darkness. Although I've stayed here for more than 50 years, but with this recent development, I want to go back to Howell, where the weather is very conducive, there is always light. Others, however, lamented that they resort to watering their environments to douse the heat intensity and enjoy the cool breeze as an alternative to use of fan and air conditioner, considering the heat wave at its peak. If you come in two hours' time now, you come and see like a market where every, uh, everybody is having a shelter here. But no state commissioner for housing and energy engineer Yuguda Sale Vungas, while calling on residents to be patient, said, Government is doing everything possible to collaborate with transmission company of Topa to the state. In Medjugorje, Yagum Subukar, NTA News. Safety of travelers and motorists plying the only route linking Medjugorje to other parts of the state and country has been guaranteed considering the ongoing intensive joint security patrol along Medjugorje Damatru Highway. Miyamuna Garba examines the situation. The Medjugorje Damatru Highway in the last couple of months was a nightmare due to incessant attacks and kidnapping by insurgents, thereby rendering the route dangerous to follow by travelers and other road users. However, the wave of attacks on the route subsided due to combined efforts of security operatives in the state, hence the road is now relatively safe as attested to by some people. Alhamdulillah. We are secure with the securities on the roads and cover all the buses that used to go in and come in to Medui. For now, at least it's okay. You can see the body soldiers, the joint patrols and all that view. As vehicular movements on the highway are now made easy with the renewed vigor of security agents in ensuring the road remains safe, security operatives say they will not relent in that regard. There is always an intensive patrol along that road. We deployed our personnel, especially from the combat teams, and some are stationed at the dangerous spots along the road. Continuous security patrol on the highway will no doubt reduce fear and anxiety on travelers plying the road. In Maiduguri, Maimuna Garba, NTN News. Those are the stories from this. It continues with Ayodeji in Abuja. Thank you, Mohammed. Back here in Abuja, the Minister of Environment, Dr. Mohammed Mahmoud Abubakar, says 16 out of the 21 sites in Ogoni community earmarked for cleanup have been completed. The minister gave this update when he joined other guests on NTA's Good Morning Nigeria to discuss the ongoing Ogoni land cleanup flagged off by the federal government in 2016. Joseph Oten reports. It is getting close to five years since the federal government flagged off the Ogoni cleanup exercise. Though assembling of competent structures to execute the project and land conflicts contributed to delay in commencement of work, the Minister of Environment, Dr. Mohamed Mahmoud Abubakar, says much has been sorted out and substantial progress has been made. The Minister revealed that 16 sites have been cleaned and the areas are witnessing restoration of vegetation and improved water. But not only 16 that have been certified by NOSDRA, which is the certification body. However, the, the 16 have been cleaned and today we have 
given out contract, six contract of over six billion. And these are really reticulated uh, uh, contract, real water project. Other guests who gave credence to the minister's statements acknowledged adequate engagement of host communities in almost 90% of contracts and skills training as well as adopting due process in operations as key factors to recent speed of work. 2020, the second set of contracts were awarded, you know, and um, they are working now. They couldn't work um, towards around February. They couldn't mobilize until around October as well then because of this COVID. Once is not a problem for this project. Because of the due process of this government, things takes it takes things must take course of how this these monies will remove. Some of these uh, sites were locked, completely locked with crude oil. But if you pass now, you will see, you know, the place is now green, showing that life has come back. Cleanup, according to the Minister of Environment, is now expected to be completed by 2024. In Abuja, Joseph Otsen, NTA News. Now let's serve you with some gender-related stories. With the rank of two-star general being the highest attained by a woman in the Nigerian military, voices are the official launch of the gender policy for the armed forces of Nigeria are calling loudly for women to reach three- and four-star general's status. Defense correspondent Naja Atutijani reports. Having four chapters reviewed by day, Professor Ekundayo Ocholi, the gender policy of the armed forces of exposes lapses in the areas of recruitment, budget, gender-based violence, and other issues with a view to resolving them. The crux of this resolution aims at ensuring that women and their society needs are safeguarded through increased emphasis on granting access to opportunities in all spheres of human endeavors, including the military. With the rank of two-star general being the highest attained by a woman in the military, voices are calling loudly for women like Commodore Jamila Malafa of the Nigerian Navy and Brigadier General Catherine Thomas, the gender advisor of the Nigerian Army, both one-star generals, to reach three- and four-star status. A policy of this nature had the propensity of opening up opportunities, not only for the female personnel, but also for the children children uh, aspiring to join the armed forces. The four-chapter policy is modeled on international standards of gender mainstreaming and seeks to remove obstacles, preventing women from reaching three- and four-star general status. And with voices calling more loudly, perhaps one of these women, some of them two-star generals, might just become the service chief in the near future. Naja Atutijani, NTA News. In another development, Nigeria can now effectively fight human trafficking and other criminal tendencies in the country, especially as they affect the female gender. This was at the launch of National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons Gender Policy Document, the implementation strategy in Abuja. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, reports. Investigations show that one of the major reasons human trafficking occurs in traditional Africa is due to gender discrimination, which goal five of the Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations aimed at eliminating. Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Omar Farouk, is optimistic that the launch of the NAPTIP gender policy will address gender gaps and contribute to the realization of the central goals of the national gender policy. The launch of NAPTIP's gender policy will complement the agency's operational strategies to curb gender-based violence and address gender gaps where they exist within the agency's internal operations. We recognize that most traffic persons have limited education or limited appreciation of the documents that are presented before them. Education is key. The NAPTIC boss said the agency now has a renewed vision. 
this would help us to look into a closer lens to areas that we have not worked on to promote a gender sensitive environment that addresses forced migration and also trafficking. It will ensure gender based victim support with proper documentation. To make the policy um, an implementable document, we also have an implementation plan. Um, which has been developed and finalized together with the policy. The forum agreed that gender equality is not only a fundamental human right, but a necessary foundation for a peaceful, prosperous, and sustainable world. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. The vision and mission of national policy on gender in education in Nigeria can only be achieved if the state's governments and other stakeholders on gender-related issues collaborate. This is the consensus of participants at a two-day stakeholders meeting on revised version of the policy held in Bochi. Muazu Hassan completes the report. Stakeholders from 10 states of the Northeast and Northwest on the content of the policy and to avail them the opportunity to give their input is the reason for this meeting. The policy on gender in basic education has been in operation for about 14 years and is in their need of review to address emerging gender issues and tackle prevailing challenges. By the time we leave and this policy comes up with the inputs that you are making, the policy is yours and nobody else. We expect that <clears throat> The directors here present, which we see as our technocrats, will really be committed and own this document. The recent survey conducted on the policy revealed that a lot of stakeholders were ignorant of the existence of the policy, while others were implementing the policy unconsciously. But this fora is expected to change the narrative. But when we get implementation, when money is allocated, then the policy is transmitted because it cannot be implemented. The participants are expected to domesticate the policy in their respective states for easy implementation. In Bauchi, Moaz Hassan, NTA News. From Bauchi, let's cross over to our Makudi Network Center, where Fatima is standing by with the next set of reports making rounds in that zone. Good evening and welcome to Makudi. Governor Samuel Otom has condemned the killing of Reverend Father Ferdinand Guban of St. Paul's Catholic Church, Ayetua village, by unknown gunmen in Katsinala local government area of Benue State. In a statement by the Chief Press Secretary to the Governor, Teve Akasi, the Governor described the attack as mindless and wondered why a harmless priest would become the target of armed men. He reassured the people of Katsinala and Sankara in general that the state government will not relent until those responsible for the killing and other attacks in that part of the state are brought to justice. The governor reaffirmed the resolve of his administration not to hand over the state to criminals and urged Bainwe people to continue to support security operatives with timely and useful information. Governor Otom sympathized with the bereaved family and prays that God grant the soul of Reverend Father Guban eternal rest. It will be recalled that the security in Sankara Axis, which comprises three local government areas, Ukum, Logo and Katsinala, has been volatile for quite some time. Still on peace and security matters, the Air Officer Commanding Tactical Air Command, Nigerian Air Force Makudi, Air Vice Marshal Edi Lubo, has pledged to bring his operational experience to bear on sustaining the relative peace, security and safety of Benue. He stated this during his courtesy visit to Governor Samuel Tom at the Government House Makudi. Charles Abba reports. The Air Officer Commanding, Tactical Air Command Makudi, Air Vice Marshal E.D. Gamso Lubo, indicated that he believes that to surmount the endemic security challenges in the country, especially in Benway State, it would take the cooperation of relevant authorities. You can do some kind of security uh, issues by mere kinetic operations that the new uh, 
strategy is the own of government approach. Bono State Governor Samuel Otom, who appreciated the vigil of the Nigerian Air Force and other security agencies to sustain the relative peace in the state, said government will continue to give its maximum support to security formations to effectively deliver on their mandates. The governor reiterated that since the government does not condone any acts capable of heating up the polity, it would continue to unveil relevant information that would result in apprehending and prosecuting perpetrators of crimes. Those things that will amplify the existing problems, like putting petrol on an existing fire, let us avoid them. But work to ensure that will keep the unity of this country. The governor, who commended the Nigerian Air Force for its disposition to civil relationship, assured Nigerian Air Force of enabling environment for it to operate, especially with regard to the issue of land. He, however, pointed out that criminal activities are the bane of economic and social political development in the country. In Makudi, Charles Abba, NTA News. And that's it from Makudi. Nationwide continues with Ayo Deji in Abuja after this break. Contemporary times require practical skills to remain competitive and relevant in your organization. Therefore, take advantage of NTA TV College short proficiency courses to sharpen your professional skills. Basic Broadcast Accounting and Auditing, date 19th April to 30th April 2021, two weeks. Audio Engineering, Operations and Maintenance, date 19th April to 23rd April 2021, one week. Protocol, Event Management and Public Relations, date 3rd May to 14th May 2021. Two weeks. Intermediate camera operation techniques. Date 17th May to 11th June 2021. Four weeks. The course fee for the four week course is 100,000 naira per participant. The fee for the two week course is 80,000 naira. While the course fee for the one week course is 40,000 naira only. Accommodation inclusive. Venue for all the courses is the serene and secure environment of NTA TV College near Old Government House, Rayfield, Jaws. For more inquiries, please call 0803 314 4383 or 0806 980 9807. NTA TV College, Jaws. Training you to be the best you want to be. Our news station brings to you news and happenings seven days a week. News at 10 a.m., news update at 11 and 1 p.m., news desk at 3 p.m. and 6 p.m., and late evening news at 11 p.m. Follow us on any of our platforms and keep abreast of events and current affairs within and outside our shores. We are on DSTV Channel 419, Go TV Channel 46, Star Times Channel 101, and Free TV Channel 703. Jones. My name is Bos Mustafa, uh, the Secretary to the Government and the Chairman of the Presidential Task Force of COVID-19. I've just had the rare privilege of uh, taking my first dose of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. And I can tell you that we are doing very well in terms of uh, our response and the administration of the vaccines uh, all over the country. As strategic leaders, we are supposed to lead by example. And the president did precisely that on Saturday with the vice president. 
and we are continuing in that uh, particular direction. The essence of taking these vaccines is to help us really uh, fight this COVID-19 virus. And the combination of the non-pharmaceutical measures and the vaccine is uh, the way to go in 2021 and thereafter. Glad you're still with us. The dividend of borrowing to fund reconstruction and rehabilitation of road networks across the country is beginning to manifest. Minister of Works and Housing, Babatunde Raji Fashala, said this after supervising the ongoing construction works on Abuja Kefi Makudi Highway. Abdullahi Muhammad reports. The Anya Amaroba Highway, an access dreaded by motorists, especially during the closing hours of the day. The ongoing expansion of the highway to 10 lanes is taking shape, putting the contractors on their toes in the unblinking eyes of the Minister of Works and Housing. This he does with the aim of putting smiles on the faces of citizens flying the highway. It would be a place where you would love to commute, you would love to drive. A reflection of these is in each of the critical road networks undergoing reconstruction or rehabilitation. Building capacity, robust welfare, and equipping the Nigeria police force with modern technology are measures being adopted to improve internal security challenges. Minister of Police Affairs, Mohammed Meigari Dingyadi, stated this at the biennial Sultan Machido Institute for Peace, Leadership, and Development Studies at the Faculty of Sciences, University of Abuja. Francis Form reports. Nigeria is grappling with some security challenges such as insurgency, banditry and kidnapping among others. But the country has been perfecting strategies to address all this. Now, the Minister of Police Affairs, in a message delivered by the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry at a lecture in University of Abuja, explained efforts by the government to tackle the challenges. He acknowledged the Sultan Machido Institute for bridging the gaps between academics and societal realities through leadership and development mentoring. We live in a world of limitless possibilities where education exposes us to our true potentials. It is the, 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 what we have been able to assimilate now during this period, given the focus and given the integrity that will form the content that we are able to give out from when you now get into the, the workspace. I also commend the Sultan Machido Institute of Peace, Leadership and Development Studies for playing the important role of addressing the challenges of security, leadership and development by working with government, the organized private sector and security agencies in the area of human capacity development. The Sultan Machido Institute for Peace, Leadership and Development Studies is a lecture series geared towards harnessing leadership potentials among undergraduates and Nigerians in general. Francis from NTN News. Synergy aimed at achieving tolerance, unity, peace and national security form part of the reason for the visit of Chairman Plateau State Council of Chiefs and Bongom Joss, that Jacob Gyang Buba to the Emir of Duse, Nuhu Muhammad Sanusi. Correspondent Ibrahim Bilgunda has details. It is a fact that traditional leaders are more closer to the people, particularly at the grassroots level. For this reason, many believe the traditional institution plays a significant role in national peace and stability. This was played out when Emir of Duse, Dr. Nuhu Muhammad Sanusi, received his just counterpart, Bongom Joss, the Jacob Gyang Buba, at his palace in Dusi. During the meeting, the royal fathers discussed issues bordering on peace, unity, and security in the country. We can live in peace if we respect each other and traditional institutions play a significant role in promoting peace. Our people, we expect, will take cue and learn to live in peace. Divisiveness is not going to help anybody to grow. The visiting monarch was taken around the historic Duse Museum and the golf sporting field established by the Emir of Duse. From Duse, Ibrahim Bellogunda, 
NTA News. Moving on now, the public financing for agriculture projects targeted at smallholder women farmers has ended in Nigeria. Country Director Action Aid, NAOB, revealed that eight states benefited from the initiative. Correspondent Elizabeth Omori has the details. The initiative Community Safety and Human Security is aimed at involving community leaders and the citizens to secure their communities while providing local intelligence reports to security agencies. Members of the committee include traditional rulers, religious leaders, representatives of youth organizations, civil societies, security agencies expected to engage communities on how to live peacefully. Federal Ministry of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs is driving the initiative with the support of state governments. The Nigerian National Security and President Muhammad Buhari's administration places emphasis on the people, the northern state, and is aimed at enhancing the social being of the citizens. Natural state government promised to support the initiative, which is in line with its community-based conflict resolution mechanism. The event is up and timely, coming at a time when the nation is faced with intermittent security challenges and its attendant consequences on human life and socio-economic development of our own society. Stakeholders commended federal government for the initiative that is expected to improve security situation in the state. Minister of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs, George Akume, met separately with Governor Abdullah Hisuli to strengthen partnership between federal and the state government. In Lafia, Aliuti Jani Mohamed, NTA News. A sincere apologies as that report is from Aliuti Jani Mohamed on the citizenship participatory approach in Nasarawa states to contain security challenges in parts of the country. Now let's go back to our earlier report where we told you that the public financing for agriculture projects, which is targeted at smallholder women in the country, Nigeria, has ended. Elizabeth Amori will be telling us more. Statistics by the Food and Agriculture Organization show that among 821 million undernourished people in the world, 257 million are located in Africa. This perhaps explains why Nigerian farmers are shifting attention to capacity building to ensure food sufficiency and end poverty. Already, the Public Financing and Agriculture Project, which is one of the initiatives embraced by smallholder women farmers, is set to be catalyzing increase in quality and quantity of food and bridging the financial gaps in agri-investment. We expect the federal and state governments to increase funding to agriculture up to 10%, which is the uh, Makutu Declaration, and then concentrate on investment on essential services. Funded by international donor partners, commenced in 2011, and women farmers from Eboin, Kwara, Delta, Bauchi, Gombe, Ondo, and FCT have so far benefited in the area of data generation and capacity building. We can move closely along together with government, you know, by, you know, organizing ourselves, you know, advocating for an increase in the budget and also track the budget when it is even actually allocated. Before now, there were no uh, financial services groups, but with the coming of this project under the ministry, we were able to understand that the need for them to raise capital. The farmers are also advocating flexible finance system and improved security surveillance to enable them sustain the trajectory. In Abuja, Elizabeth Omori, NT News. Let's also tell you that normalcy has returned to Niamey, Niger Republic capital, after an alleged attempted coup by some military personnel. Joyce Ometu reports that heavy gunfire erupted near Niger Republic presidency a few days before the inauguration of the country's first elected president, Mohamed Bazoum. The attack came at a time the authorities are finalizing an arrangement for the handing over of power to the newly elected president, Mohamed Bazoum. The army officers who allegedly attempted to break into the presidential area in Niamey were repelled by presidential guards. Residents report that the overnight shooting lasted for about 20 minutes. 
Even though there is no official statement from the government at the time of this report about the people behind the attack, reports have it that some soldiers have been arrested. Niger has suffered numerous coups in its history. The most recent is that of February 2010, which toppled the then president, Mamadou Tanja. There have been growing attacks by militants and political tensions following Mohamed Bazoum's victory in the country's February presidential election runoff. Bazoum is a former interior minister and right-hand man of the outgoing president, Mamadou Yusufu, who is voluntarily stepping down after two five-year terms. Former President Maman Usman, who lost in the runoff, has rejected the results and alleged fraud. He called for peaceful marches across the country, but the planned opposition protest scheduled for today in Nyame was banned by the authorities. Joyce Ometu, NTA News. Reactions trail Super Eagles of Nigeria's 3 nil victory over Lesotho. Let's have details on sports updates. Many thanks for joining us on Sports Update. I am Badi Adeleye.